I'm Harry with Postfly and we're going to be going over basic entomology. So basic entomology, some of you may have remember this from grade school where we had a cycle of life um, that kind of started in the water and it was the cycle of a bug. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking through today and that's the important part of the trout fishing. Um, basically the casting and everything, that is basically what I try to equate to like riding your bike. You know, it's something that's going to come, is the basic mechanics are going to come. This is where the sport really starts, is learning about the entomology, learning about the bugs and the forage that's out there for those fish. So let's get into it and start with the beginning of the life cycle. So we'll be starting at the beginning of the life cycle and what I'd like to reference is the beginning beginning of the life cycle is the nymph stage. So the nymph stage basically is at the bottom of the river and there's four different stages within that nymph for four different personalities. There's crawlers, clingers, swimmers, and burrowers. Somewhere within those four is what the nymph will be doing. So the nymph, again living on the bottom of the river, lives on the river for 99% of its life. It's on there for 340 days out of the year, give or take. Um, some less, some more, depending on the bug. But as a reference, 99% of its time is in this little, little stage. And what the nymph is, is basically very, very sleek, slender fly with not much to really, not too much detail on it. Um, little thorax, thin little uh, tail, but real thin, not much to it. So what happens with these nymphs is that some, at some point within the season, Mother Nature tells this little nymph that's in the baby stage that it's time to start becoming an adult, basically. Um, and how this works is on a timeline, just like plants that we see in the ecosystem. So um, up here in New England, where we're based, one of our first plants that come out is a forsythia bush. It's this beautiful bright yellow bush that comes out at the beginning of the season. Always in April, give or take the second week. Every single year in April at the same exact time. It's on a timeline and what's happening there is that the earth is starting to tilt. Uh, the amount of light that we're getting on an average and the amount of heat that we're getting on average is slowly rising and it triggers that plant to start to bloom. It's the same idea with these bugs. So at some point Mother Nature, with that till, is telling this bug, this nymph, all right, nymph, it's your turn to start becoming the adult. So what this nymph does is that it creates a gas. Some of them in their body, some of them outside of their body in a little, um, what's called a shook. But either way, there's a little bit of gas that's being created by these, these little nymphs and these bugs, which allows them to rise up through the water column. This is when they enter the second stage of their life, and they're called an emerger, which makes sense because it's emerging from the bottom of the river system. And uh, what the emerger looks like is just a little bit different from the nymph, but what we start to see is we really get to start to see the beginning of some wings coming out. We see a more defined, established tail coming, and the body is becoming a little more segmented. So it's basically starting to develop its adult parts. I like to tell people to kind of equate this to your teenage years. They're here, they fly by, they're over, you're an adult. So we went from that baby stage, going into our emerger, um, up to the adult. Now this emerger stage, which is happening in the middle of the water column, this is a very, it's very short lived, just like the teenage years. It could last anywhere from like an hour, a couple days, um, and sometimes maybe a week, but give or take. It just, again, it depends on the species of bug. But for like reference, just think of it as a very short period of time. So as this emerger rises up through the water column and rises up, it finally hits the surface of the, of the water. And the surface of the water is where we finally get our adult. Our adults are what we most commonly see um, on the surface of the water, obviously. And sometimes you'll see it on lakes. You'll see all these little bugs on a lake with these ripples that are coming up off the surface. These are bugs that are being born that have gone through the transition of your nymph, emerger, and finally up to their adult stage. So what that adult looks like, again, like I said, is it's a very, it's the one that we most commonly see. They're usually a nuisance. You're swatting at them. This is your adult stage of a bug. So here it's real obvious. Upright wings, very detailed segmented body with a very detailed clean tail. So again, what we most commonly see. So these bugs, they sit on the surface 
they sit on the surface long enough to dry themselves off. Basically, their whole idea is that they're, they're trying to get away from the water as quick as pop possible, dry off, and mate. So there's different ways that they go about drying themselves off. Some will sit on the surface and just wait for the sun or the wind to dry themselves off as they drift down the river. Some of them will actually try to like throw it off. So they've been aquatic their whole life, right? That 99% of the time they've been subsurface and on the bottom. So now all of a sudden they're waterlogged. They're trying to kick that water off or dry it off. Once they've gotten to the point where they're dry, they'll actually take off into the air and head towards vegetation. So an interesting thing to check out during the summer just while you're out there is if you're ever getting attacked when you're walking through the woods by different bugs and different uh, mayflies and whatnot, if you were to go stand in the middle of a river, you're going to notice that you're not getting bothered by them. Reason being is, is again, they get away from the water as soon as they have that chance and they dry off, they head towards the vegetation. So once they head to vegetation, they look for a mate, they mate, the males die pretty quickly after that. And then the females, they lift off back into the air um, through the night. And they will enter what's called the fourth stage, which is called a spinner or a spinner fall. So the fourth stage is basically once those females have mated and the males have died, the females take off into the air, hovering above the river until the temperatures start to cool during the night. And uh, once that cooling starts, those females follow that down, back down to the river. Once they hit the surface of the river, they lay their eggs, they die and float down the river, and then those eggs sink back down to the bottom and they cycle right through on a year cycle, some two, some three, again, depending on the species, but generally a one year cycle, back to that date again when they go through. And that's what completes that circle of life and that cycle of life. So as anglers, trout anglers, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out where in that cycle that those trout are eating. So is it a nymph, is it an emerger, or is it a dry? So we're gonna go over some different ways to tell that pretty quickly when you get to the river. Let's go check it out.